their last 14. 14 games over 500. Whew. Really playing well. Speaking of which, how about James Harden? You ready for this? 31 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. Fellas, that's in the first half. Oh, man, I thought it was a game. <laughs> no, 5 for 11 from three-point range, 12 for 13 from the efficiency, everything. Marvin Bagley, no chance. You know what they call that? He's in his bag, mm -hmm. no cap. No cap. <laughs> None at all. But the Rockets needing them all because they have a three-point lead right now. Enos Kanter, we know Nurkic out for the season. Kanter, good pickup by them. He has to be huge coming down the stretch for them, going into the playoffs, playing his best basketball. Now looking at these Western Conference standings, congrats to the six teams that have already clinched. But we have to start with those Clippers. I mean, as you see it now, 15 games now, over 500. Doc Rivers, it seems like, oh, Tobias Harris, you're playing at an all-star level. We're going to move you to try to see where we're going in the future. And then they play better as a team. So looking at Doc's career, we know he won a title with the Celtics. He also won Coach of the Year in his first year with the Orlando Magic. So considering those two instances, where does this rank in the best coaching job that he's done in his career? To me personally, I think he's – this is his best – job as a coach I think last year was amazing watching there's the that roster from 99 2000 his first year and look 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 this Corey Maggette on the back end of his career uh, Pat Garrity see some of the names that jump out to you that make make a lot of sense Chucky Atkins Darrell Armstrong six man of the year and it's so so many similarities with the roster that you have intact right now um, and I love the fact that you uh, you have Lou Williams, who's just the, the name, the six man of the year award should be renamed after him or Jamal Crawford at <laughs> some point because they just it should be the, the they, Lou Crawford award, the Lou Crawford <laughs> award or something. Hey, I put that out there because look, they just embody that whole thing. But Doc has done a remarkable job, and Gallinari being healthy, the glue guy, the ultimate glue guy. Look, they traded away Tobias Harris, someone they was building around. They traded away DeAndre Jordan last year. Chris Paul left a year ago in free agency. Blake Griffin. And you haven't missed a beat. And then you have two max space spots in free agency, and you're going to make the playoffs this season. That is unheard of. Hey, look, applause to Doc Rivers and the Clippers. Absolutely. So you agree <laughs> this is the best job of his career? No, that's incredible. I mean, to, to Karan's point, you get rid of all your franchise guys, Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan. They held it. Lob City is no longer there. Then you get rid of Tobias Harris, who was having an all-star caliber season out yes. west as well. And you're still making the playoffs. That that goes directly to the coach. Now, those guys are balling. Lou Williams is balling. Harold is balling. All those guys. Gallo is playing great. But the coach has to find ways, plays, defensive schemes for his players to be successful. And Doc has done that. Absolutely. You guys campaigning for him. You know who the <laughs> franchise player is for the Los Angeles Clippers? Shea Gilgis Alexander. Name another. Uh, Landry Shamet. Danilo Gallinari. Doc Gallinari. Ah, I see what you did there. The coach is the, franchise, the franchise player. That's Excellent a, point. That's a great problem to have. I like have. where you went there. The Nuggets and Warriors, they have identical records at the top of the Western Conference. Now, Golden State lost an overtime game on Friday night to the Timberwolves. Last night's ending was, well, very interesting to say the least. There it is. Interchange. KD for three. He made it! And he's fouled! Oh, they're oh, going to say the fouls before the shot. It's impossible. you got to be crazy. Now four seconds left. You need to do it again. Curry for three. He made it! <laughs> they didn't foul! And they'll go to double overtime! Oh, Calder's looking oh, for Big Cat at the over, rim. you got a foul on Durant. you got to be kidding Le me. Leon Wood's going to decide the game on a foul on Durant on a pass that was 10 feet over Carl Anthony Towns' head. It was uncatchable. Instead of letting these teams play five more minutes, you're going to decide the game on this call. It makes one and it's over. And there it is. Well, the end of that game certainly looked like the Warriors versus the referees, but if you look at how they played since the All-Star break, it might be the Warriors versus themselves as they head into the postseason. This is what they had to say following that loss to Minnesota. It is what it is. We never want to put it in the hands of the ref, but 
Like, Leon, you just got to get out the way at that point. You can get back to refing the game once the overtime start, but at that point, like, get out the way. But, you know, they always got to be seen. You know, it's their league, too. Uh, you have to ask the MVP of tonight, Mark Kogan. Is it the most frustrating ending you've seen to a game that you've been a part of? Probably not, but it's the one that has just happened, so I'm still a little, a little heated. <laughs> Booz, you don't really see Steph Curry taking stabs, and he did there. Right. So for him to jump out of character a little bit seems to be an issue with the Warriors. Not something you really want to do to go go to battle with the refs right before the playoffs, right? No, nah, definitely not. But in the heat of the moment right there, I mean, I, even with us sitting here last night doing the game, when KD caught it and shot it, hit the game, I was like, wow, that's game over. He's going to make the free throw. Game is going to be a wrap. <laughs> we thought it was a, you know, a good call, a four-point play kind of play. Um, so they felt like they got robbed last night. That's how they felt. And obviously, Steph hits the three. You saw what happened there. They called a foul on him. At the end of the day, uh, the Warriors are a team that can overcome a lot, but you still want to have the refs on your side. Might be mm. some game sevens coming up in the playoffs. What Might be. You. Right. <laughs> so. How do you feel about that, Karan? It seems like you got a lot going on there in this situation. <laughs> no, you know, I just want you never hear Steph Curry be vocal about pretty much anything. He's kind of like the Tim Duncan, like this, the quiet superstar that just goes about his business, that continues to win in his unique way and has a, a, a leadership quality about himself that everybody just follows because they understand that he's the real deal. But for him to come out and say that, you know, he – wasn't in agreement or wasn't in line with the officiating or the cause, it's, it's something to look at and it's extremely glaring. And I'm just waiting for the verified count of the officials to respond at some point. You know what I mean? So and that's going to be interesting. I'm looking for the Warriors to respond in the first round of the playoffs and go full nuclear. So I feel sorry for it. Yeah, it, yeah they, well. they're about to be on one right now. And you know what? They have the Nuggets on Tuesday night, a game you can see on TNT. Players only, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Chris, you're out of here that night. You're out of here. Hey, the Nets back home and players only on the court. Damari Carroll knocking it down from outside. Brooklyn with a four-point lead over the Celtics. It doesn't take a genius to know the starters have the right formula. If they're in there and they're playing, I love them. 